Hello, I'm Dr. Robert Cyprian. Modern society is fast, busy, and unforgiving. We don't get to live in a culture of leisure and rest. If we want to sustain ourselves, we must hustle. Sometimes we have to do things we don't want to do, be places we don't want to be, be around people we don't want to be around. Sometimes we have to spend hours in our cars or on public transportation to get somewhere. We don't have time to eat properly. Then we drive to a gym, run on a treadmill, and do crazy exercises because we sit in a car and in an office all day. Many of us don't get to live the life we want, do, things, do the things we want to do, or be with the people we want to be with. This causes emotional stress. According to Hans Selye, one of the first researchers to point out how stress causes health problems, there are four main stresses that affect the body. Emotional, physical, chemical, and thermal. Stress is one of the big reasons why our health is so poor. Even though we live in a time where we have so many modern miracles available to us, but most of these miracles are designed to help you after you have already started to fall apart. You need to do something before that happens, before the diseases start to take over your body. You need to do something when you begin feeling the stress. There's a fact that stress causes it so many major illnesses that we face today. Dr. Bruce Lipton, who's the author of Biology of Belief, states that your genes, which give you your genetic predisposition toward inherited diseases, are only active if they're turned on. What turns them on? Your environment does. Stress is one of the main things that turns your genes on. What does this mean? Well, imagine your genes are like a hand of playing cards. Whatever dreadful diseases you are predisposed to because of your genetic makeup, they don't express themselves unless you show your hand of cards. If you don't have to show your hand, your genes never have to express themselves. In my years of practice, I've noticed that the biggest stressor that people don't take care of on their own is emotional stress. We take care of the physical body by choosing to exercise, doing yoga, going to bodywork professionals. We improve on the chemical stresses by eating a good diet, avoiding GMOs and food additives and sweeteners. We prepare ourselves for thermal stresses with controlled climate in our homes, work, and cars, and with the clothing that we wear. But few people have a practice to help with emotional stresses. When you are under stress, your adrenal glands secrete cortisol to help your body deal with whatever is going on. That's okay for a short period of time, but the problem is most people in modern society are under constant stress. We are under stress from work, from school, from family, from the foods that we eat that contain chemicals and impurities, from the toxins in the air and the water, being exposed to electromagnetic fields from our computers, cell phone, fluorescent lighting, electrical power cords, staying awake late at night with bright lights shining on us from our TV or other things. When you have an abnormal output of cortisol, it upsets your hormonal balance, your metabolism, your immune system, your physical body, your mind, your emotions. Can you imagine how this affects your overall well-being? Imbalances in all these things can contribute to almost every modern disease that we know of. Once the systems of your body are out of sync and disturbed, diseases start to happen. Diseases related to the hormones, the metabolism, the immune system, and inflammation. If you live in the United States, the two biggest killers are heart disease and cancer. If you're outside the United States, the two biggest killers are heart disease and stroke. From the American Psychological Association, more than 94% of adults believe that stress can contribute to the development of major illnesses, such as heart disease, depression, obesity, and some types of stress can trigger heart attacks, arrhythmias, and sudden death, particularly in people who already have cardiovascular disease. Although the majority of adults understand stress has a strong impact on a person's health, a sizable minority still think that stress only has a slight or no impact on their physical health and mental health. From the Telegraph, researchers have found that people aged 65 or older were five times more likely to die within a six-year follow-up period if they had high levels of stress hormones. They were more likely to die from cardiovascular disease such as heart attacks, heart failure, and strokes. So in 2012, ischemic heart disease deaths were about 7.4 million. 
stroke deaths, 6.7 million, cancer-related deaths, 8.2 million. So here from the Mayo Clinic are some stress management tips. Get active, laugh more, connect with others, assert yourself, try yoga, get enough sleep, keep a journal, get into music and creativity, seek counseling. All these things are definitely beneficial. What do you see here? These can be ways to help you release stress, exercise, laughter, talking, resting, venting your feelings, and having focus in life besides your stress. The mind-body connection is obvious. When you're going through a difficult time emotionally and are under stress, your nervous system changes. You shift into what is called a sympathetic nervous system dominance. This puts you into a fight or flight reaction. When your sympathetic nervous system is dominant, it shuts down your rest and digest functions, which include your immune system, digestion, hormones. Your body funnels all of its energy into muscle tension, rapid thinking, high heart rate, thinking that you're under attack. When your body is preparing for an attack, it feels it doesn't need to immediately worry about immune system function, digestion, and hormones. When these functions are turned off for a long period of time, Disease processes, aches and pains, insomnia, emotional irregularities become dominant. And all this stems from what's going on in your mind. What can you do about emotional stress? Meditation and visualization are the best things that you can do about emotional stress. There is more and more research coming out that shows that meditation is amazing for helping with health and overall well-being in life. It calms your nervous system and brings it into balance. It helps the body heal. It releases emotions, brings you back into the rest and digest function of your nervous system. Combine meditation with visualization and you can reprogram your mind to do what you want. In the Processing Emotions class, I put together six very easy ways of changing the way you feel. These methods are designed to be used to change the way you feel and thus reduce your stress. I've been using these tools for years, personally and with my patients, and I found them all be valuable to this day. If you're ready to shift your mind and try one of these exercises for free, enter your email address in below. Just this one exercise for processing emotions can be a game changer in the way you feel, and it may even save your life.